Hi guys, it's Lean back for another video on Canva. Today we're doing how we make a two page spread for a children's book. Now as I'm showing you here, the canvas of my spread here is two pages put together of the size of the children's book I'm making with a little bit extra for the spine. It's not really that important to have much spine space. You will see when we come to doing this. We do make it a little bit bigger. A good tip is to actually go on to KDP and use the cover template calculator to figure out your book pages and your size of your book overall and the cover size it gives you will actually be right for making this template page. I was just showing you there that you can use the grid lines and rulers to map out if you need any markers on this blank page such as the center but we don't use them it was just showing you you can. Okay so for this one I'm going to just throw on some basic scenery and um, this video isn't really about putting together scenery we have another video about that so this is just basically me using bits of clip art to make a basic scene to show you how I'm going to turn this into a single page on our master copy of our book. Now I'm just looking at some skies here. I found this sky earlier but I don't really like it so I'm finding another one just so that I can show you how you can use smaller images to create backgrounds that do not stretch out and cover your whole template. As you can see stretching this makes it get far too big with the details and loses a lot of them. So I'm going to copy and paste it and I'm going to put them side by side. But because they don't match up, I'm going to flip that second image. And as you can see, voila, it matches itself perfectly. So add another one over there. And it's one of those little tips for making seamless images. Just take your transparency up and down if you want to make it lighter. And don't forget to group it together to be one sheet. And you have a custom background. I'm actually going to turn mine upside down because I think there's more detail at the bottom. And upon doing so, I realized there's a bunny rabbit in the clouds right there. It's very cute, but also kind of scary, like a mean bunny rabbit. So I'm going to throw in some mountains and I was just going to show you how to layer really quickly singular elements to make a scene, but it's good, it would just take too long. I'm just showing you, you can lighten and make things see through if you're building layers on a scene, but then I discarded it and went for this one instead. Now this is another one that isn't big enough to cover my whole canvas. So I'm going to show you the same little tip applies here where you can paste things together to make a longer scene. All you have to do is flip the ones that are at the sides so that they match up. I'm just about to do that. Just flip over that image and it matches up seamlessly and flip over the other one and voila, we've taken one very narrow image and turned it into a long background image and you wouldn't really know to look at it unless you peer really closely once your scene is compiled. Okay, once you've done that, make sure to group together all your pieces if you do compile them like I've just done. And I'm going to add a little sun here because I always like to add a little detail. Every one of my outside scenes has to have a sun. I'm going to move it to the back so it's behind the clouds and looks like it's part of the image. And now I'm just going to make sure I'm happy with the positioning of everything. I'm going to group it together, move it around, get exactly where I want it. And then I'm going to group it all into one sheet. So once you've got that, the other little trick, if you've watched our previous videos to sort of, oh, in fact, I did not. I decided I needed a foreground. Our characters are quite big that I'm putting on this page. So there was nowhere really that they fitted. So I'm bringing a large foreground for my characters to be standing on. I'm not going to go into depths of creating the characters on this video or put, giving them shadows to stand on. This is more about the background images so I'm just going to chuck on a couple of images of our Lean and Lou bears onto this foreground. Now this is the tip from a previous video to mutify and bring all our colours together. We overlay a large white rectangle over the entirety of our page. We go at our transparency and we bring it down until the colours of our page are where we're happy with them. Now it's at this point I usually go and find my characters, little Lean and Lou there. I'm just going to use these two basic ones. I'm going to copy this little 
lean bear that's me the devil I'm going to position him on this page and I'm going to position Lou on the other page Lou is the angel of course because Lou is so nice so I'm kind of happy with the sizing of my scene I make a copy of it so that I can remove my two characters and I'm going to download this page but I noticed that there's a little white bit there that I need to adjust so I'm just fixing that one last adjustment before I download this page okay so once you've got your scenery you go and download this as a PNG now this is the trick you want to go here and make it two or three times bigger than you have actually got it set and download this ensures you won't lose any quality when we reposition it on our singular pages it's just a little trick okay so once you've downloaded that epic page you're going to go to your master copy of your book which should be set to your single page sizes okay there we go this is a master of our singular page book you're going to upload onto this book so upload the, the image that you just downloaded which is your two pages of matching scene you're going to put it on there you're going to match it up to your top right corner and drag it down until it matches the bottom of your page exactly you're then going to copy it onto your second blank page and paste and then you're going to drag it to the opposite direction and fit it exactly this will give you a seamless join between your two pages now you can take your characters from your page where you've made your pre-designed characters and stick them on giving you ability to position them in the center or move them around any way you want them because your background scene ain't going nowhere I'm just going to take Lou with us for the journey too Lane's very lonely when Lou doesn't come so we can move them around and now this is the page where then we would bring in our text of our story and that means we've got the ability to move around our character and our text without disturbing any of the background scene and we stick them on obviously I'm not writing a story so this is the great adventures of add a heading and obviously you would position your text wherever you want on your page for your story I'll stick one on here just so you can see and when you've got all your text in place and your characters in place you can always go down to the little box down in the bottom right corner that I'm going to go to now and have a look at your double pages to see they line up seamlessly when they're sewn together or however Amazon put them together you can see they're a perfect match and you've still got the ability to move around your characters and your text so that is how we make a double page spread if you want more on this video leave a comment below and we'll try and pull apart in detail any parts of the video that we didn't explain and any suggestions for anything else you want to see and we will catch you in the next one